Today we are going to talk about a case that happened last spring. The murderer and the victim were not strangers, and they had friction over a trivial matter. Although the victim's experience is sympathetic, he also reaped the fruits of his own labor. He dug this pit himself, and the unfortunate ending was doomed the moment he defended the murderer many years ago. 43-year-old Kay Baker lives with his two sons in the small town of Lycia, Florida. He is a third-grade math and science teacher at a local elementary school. Just after midnight on the night of May 28, 2022, Kay Baker's home suddenly made an unsettling sound, disturbing his next-door neighbor Jonathan. Hello everyone, I am Zhao Bei. Welcome to watch the real case. It was a warm spring night. Kay's neighbor Jonathan first lay on the sofa in his home watching TV. And then he fell asleep due to fatigue. When he was sleeping soundly, he woke up with a heavy object falling to the floor. After listening carefully, it seemed that someone was gasping in pain. Since his wife and children slept on the second floor, Jonathan thought it was his daughter who had fallen off the bed. So he immediately got up and ran upstairs to check. Soon, he found that his family was sleeping soundly in bed, and the sound did not come from his own house. Was it an illusion, or was it that the neighbor was not sleeping and making noises in the middle of the night? Jonathan decided to go outside to find out. In the moonlight, he saw that there seemed to be a person lying on the lawn in the front yard. To be precise, the front yard of his neighbor Kay Baker's house. But that place was just close to his yard. From a distance, it seemed that the girl lying on the lawn was a young and petite girl. Jonathan hurried forward to check what happened to her. The girl fell face down in a pool of blood, and her life or death was unknown. At this time, a rustling sound came from the woods next to her, as if someone was walking quickly on the road. Looking at Sanjing, he felt that he looked around, but saw nothing. Fearing that the attacker would return again, Jonathan decided to stay by the girl's side. He shouted loudly, and his wife told him to call the police immediately. My village mother is a mouthful mother. I took a look and it was not O. Oh. The police and rescuers arrived at the scene within 10 minutes and found that the victim was dead. She was not the little girl that Jonathan and his wife thought. But their neighbor Kay Baker. The attacker stabbed him many times. And the most serious wound visible to the naked eye was a severe tear in the neck. Investigators concluded that the cruel murderer had tried to chop off his head. Next, the police began to search the scene of the crime. Which was Kay's home. There was a gray sedan parked in the driveway. By checking the license plate number. They confirmed that the car was not Kay's and the owner was someone else. His name was Matthew Terry. There was an open window outside the house. And the screen had been damaged. One of Kay's sons lived in the room. However, on the night of the crime, both children did not seem to be at home. This window is facing the direction of the neighbor Jonah. Turning right from the window, you will turn to the front yard of the house. Which is where Kay was last found. Going around the backyard. Investigators found a few drops of blood extending from the house to the outside, which was probably left by the perpetrator when he fled, because they were not sure whether there were other injured people in the house at the time. They decided to go into the house first to check. The investigators first noticed that there was a mobile phone on the kitchen counter. Next to the mobile phone was a shelf specially used for placing knives, and there was just one knife missing on it. These kitchen knives were purchased as a set and it is not necessarily called a bird's beak knife. The blade is about 8 centimeters long and has an arc, a bit like a parrot's beak, and is specially used for peeling. This weapon, which is suspected to be used by the murderer to commit the crime, has never been found. Walk through the kitchen to the bathroom door. Investigators found that the door frame was severely damaged, indicating that someone had violently knocked the bathroom door open. There were also signs of forced entry on the door of the master bedroom and there was a mobile phone on the bedside table. When the police were about to enter the children's room with the broken window, they found that the door was locked. They broke in decisively, but there was no one inside. The search inside the house was soon over, and the investigators began to focus on the few drops of blood at the backyard door. A search dog was brought to the scene to track the smell of the blood. The smell led the police dog to a dense forest near the house. Not long after, the investigators found a large piece of grass covered with blood in the forest. The blood was not dry yet, indicating that the perpetrator had not gone far. They decided to change the attack dog and continue the search. After arriving in the woods, 
The attack dog found something unusual and began to bark wildly, showing bravery. The police shouted to the perpetrator to show up quickly. Otherwise they would let the dog go and let the police dog rush over to bite him. Soon, a faint sound came from the bushes, and a man wearing a t-shirt on his upper body and only a pair of underwear on his lower body walked out of the darkness with his head down. He said his name was Matthew Terry, the owner of the small car in the driveway of Kay's house. Matthew had several knife wounds on her neck, and blood soaked her shirt, because she was not wearing shoes. Her soles were injured, and it was very painful to walk. It may be because of this reason that he could not escape far. After finding Matthew, the police immediately arrested him on a charge of murder and ended the search operation that night. So, was Matthew the murderer of Kay? Why did he do this? The answer was hidden a few hours before the crime. The investigation found that 47-year-old Matthew and 43-year-old Kay were a couple. The day before the crime, May 27, was the last day of the semester. After this day, Kay, as a teacher, officially entered the holiday. That night, Kay and Matthew went to a barbecue bar with a group of friends to celebrate. A diner in the middle got up and went to the bathroom. Kay came out of the bathroom one step earlier than Matthew. On the way back to the table, he saw his friend Kelly coming towards him. He greeted her happily and twisted his waist regardless of anything. At this time, a strange man passed by the two women. He was very humorous. He walked while playfully imitating Kay's waist-twisting movements and interacted with him for about 34 seconds. Matthew, who came out of the bathroom, happened to see this scene. He immediately thought that he could flirt with other men and was extremely angry. After returning to the table, in front of his friends, he began to strongly accuse Kay of being shameless. Kay, who was wronged, quarreled with him a few words, and the atmosphere was a bit awkward for a while. At about 11.30 in the evening, Matthew and Kay left the barbecue bar and drove home together. On the way home, Matthew was still chattering about Kay not flirting with other men. Kay was almost tortured to death. He called his friend Kelly and asked her for help to explain to Matthew that he did not flirt with the strange man he met in the restaurant. At 11.56, Kelly received a text message from Kay saying sorry. We are fine, but just 30 minutes later, neighbor Jonathan found Kay in his yard and died of excessive blood loss. Based on the clues left at the scene, investigators believe that Matthew was still there after the two returned home. Kay was still upset about dancing with another man, and he got drunk and roughed up KK wanted to resist. But he was no match for Matthew and was stabbed by him. Kay once ran into his son's room and locked the door, thinking he could avoid Matthew's harm. But Matthew broke the door open and continued to stab him with a knife. Desperate Kay could only break the window and jump out, hoping to rush to the neighbor's house to ask for help. The noise he made when he landed attracted the attention of his neighbor Jonathan. Unfortunately, Kay, who was seriously injured, was knocked to the ground by Matthew who was chasing him before he ran to Jonathan's house. Matthew, who was a zombie, stabbed his neck with a knife, trying to cut off his head and pack it away. Later, Jonathan suddenly appeared and interrupted his plan. He immediately slipped back to the backyard and fled the scene until the police arrested him. When the police checked Matthew's background, they were shocked to find that Kay was not his first victim. He had a serious history of domestic violence. What was even more unexpected to the police was that the victim Kay knew Matthew's past clearly. Why would she choose to be with such a man? Speaking of which, their relationship was really a bad fate. More than 20 years ago, they had a relationship, but later broke up. Later, because of one thing, the two got back together. It was March 2015, and Matthew met a woman named Michelle through a dating website. They both lived in Michigan. Michelle was a single mother, and Matthew had just retired from the Marine Corps and worked as a wrestling coach in the local area. Not long after the two met, they dated casually for a few times. Michelle found that Matthew was not the man he wanted, so she was ready to stop seeing him, but she unexpectedly found that she was pregnant with Matthew's child, in order to give the little life in her belly a complete home. He decided to continue dating Matthew. Later, Michelle soon discovered that Matthew was extremely jealous and possessive. He often swore and liked to use violence, especially after drinking. These behaviors were even more uncontrollable. After getting drunk, Matthew actually picked up a frying pan and smashed Michelle, 
who was holding their son. Another time, she grabbed the kitten at home and threw it against the wall. More often, he would suddenly appear at Michelle's door drunk, knocking on the door frantically and loudly asking him if he had secretly raised a wild man. During this period, Matthew changed his job and joined an internet company. One day, he complained to a colleague that he wanted to stab Michelle to vent his anger. At that time, the colleague did not take it seriously and thought he was bragging. However, a few months later, on March 17, 2017, Matthew proved that he was serious about what he said. On that day, Matthew went to the bar with Michelle and a few friends to drink. At about 6 o'clock in the evening, Michelle wanted to go home, but Matthew was drunk and unconscious and couldn't walk. Michelle was furious and left him at the bar. More than an hour later, at 8 o'clock in the evening, Matthew ran to his house and knocked on the door frantically. Michelle opened the door and let him in. Matthew was still wandering in the kitchen in the first second, and rushed to Michelle's side in the next second, swung his fist and knocked him to the ground, which scared Michelle. He dodged and asked Matthew what he wanted to do. Matthew replied evilly that he wanted to kill him, and then swung his fists densely at his head. The fist hurt, so he grabbed various furniture on the side and smashed them hard on Michelle. Just when Michelle was about to lose consciousness in pain, Matthew stopped. Michelle thought everything was finally over, but he didn't expect that the more terrifying thing was still to come. Matthew suddenly grabbed a knife and stabbed him in the neck. The large amount of blood that gushed out instantly woke Michelle up. He knew that if he didn't save himself, he might have no chance. So he struggled to stand up and rushed to the garage, trying to escape from the garage to find someone to help. Matthew immediately followed and tried to stop him. Although poor Michelle had successfully pressed the automatic switch button of the garage door, he was knocked to the ground by Matthew again because he was too slow. He didn't know how many punches he received. At this time, the garage door had already risen to a certain height. He took the opportunity to roll out and came to the driveway outside the house. Matthew didn't stop. He rode on Michel, grabbed his head, and slammed it against the concrete floor again and again. Then he took out a knife and stabbed him three times in the right shoulder. Michel had no strength to escape. He could only scream and call for help from the neighbors on both sides. Finally, he heard someone across the street yelling to let him go. But Matthew was not afraid at all. He continued to raise the knife to fight back against Michelle. When Michelle grabbed the blade with his bare hands and took the knife away, he bit Michelle's arm and face with his mouth. The violence continued until the police arrived at the scene. Michelle was rushed to the hospital with wounds all over her body. She stayed in the intensive care unit for five days before she was out of danger and narrowly escaped death. The case officer in charge of this case thought that the scene of the crime was horrible and no different from a murder scene. Matthew's method of killing was very cruel and his intention to kill was obvious. So he was charged with attempted murder. As a result, Matthew contacted an old friend who had known him for more than 20 years to testify in court for him. This friend was Kay Baker. He was happy to stand in the witness stand as a character witness for Matthew and told the judge that Matthew had no violent tendencies and was an honest and trustworthy person who was trustworthy. Michelle was not sure whether Kay really didn't know Matthew's character or lied deliberately. During the trial, he sent Kay a photo of himself covered in wounds through Facebook and left a message saying that he should never let this happen to him. Unfortunately, Kay did not take Michelle's reminder seriously. Her impression of Matthew may still remain at the time when they fell in love 20 years ago. Of course, Kay was not the only one who defended Matthew. Other family members and friends also testified for him. Later, Matthew's lawyer actually convinced the jury that Matthew's injury to Michelle was in self-defense. Everything happened for a reason. It was mainly because Michelle was unreasonable and started the fight first. As a Marine, Matthew had to use professional means to stop him. In the end, the court only sentenced him to 3 to 10 years in prison. Three years after his reinstatement, he was granted parole and released early due to good performance. At that time, Michelle wrote to the Michigan Parole Board to express her concerns. She believed that Matthew's early release would harm society. Not only would his life and his family's lives be in danger, but there was a high possibility that other women would be harmed by him. But suppose the committee turned a deaf ear to Michelle's warning. Wait, during the three years in prison, 
Matthew had been in contact with Kay Baker. So as soon as he was released from prison in December 2021, he immediately went to Florida to join Kay and the two lived together. They were living a happy life. But the good times didn't last long. Something happened after just a few months of being together. After being arrested, Matthew refused to explain the details of the case. Nor did he admit that he was the murderer of his girlfriend Kay in November 2022. Almost a year after the incident, the trial officially began. The prosecutor believed that he was the murderer because it was not the first time he had done such a thing. As for the motive for the crime, it was also very obvious. They found Kelly, a surveillance witness in the restaurant, and the bar staff proved that Matthew murdered Kay out of jealousy. He just couldn't stand Kay's fleeting interaction with the man in the barbecue bar. So he wanted to kill. The prosecutor also believed that after the crime, Matthew tried to commit suicide because when he was arrested, investigators found multiple knife wounds on his neck. Matthew's defense lawyer made up a ridiculous story, saying that Kay was killed by an outside intruder. Matthew had a fierce confrontation with the other party, so there were many wounds on his body. The intruder eventually jumped out of the window and escaped. Matthew followed him into the woods relentlessly. Unfortunately, he never had the chance to see the other party's face clearly. The police immediately identified Matthew as the murderer after finding him in the woods that night and hastily gave up the search, causing the real murderer to escape. Since the murder weapon has not been found, the defense lawyer also tried to use this to help Matthew clear his suspicion. They argued that the murder weapon may not be the victim's, and the knife in the kitchen of Kay's house may have been brought from outside by the murderer and taken away after the crime. The defense least wanted the jury members to know about Matthew's violent history against his ex-girlfriend, because it would easily remind them of the iron law that it is difficult to change one's nature. But the prosecution would never give up this opportunity. They summoned Michelle to testify in court, and Michelle's testimony played an important role. After the trial, the jury only took one hour and ten minutes to find Matthew guilty of first-degree murder. Florida has the death penalty, but he was not sentenced to death, only life imprisonment. The judge said that Matthew should have rotted to death in a Michigan prison. But he had escaped by chance. Now that he was in his hands, he would never let him off easily.